Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. We're happy that you are here this morning to worship the Lord, our King, and our Savior. And we want to welcome you this morning to church. Also, those are worshiping with us online, want to welcome you. Happy Sabbath. This is our deacon and deaconess's day. And we're happy that you're here to join us in worship. Let us stand as we pray. Our dear Father, we are so happy and glad that you are God, and we can address you as our Father because you have made yourself intimate with us. We thank you, God, for having taken us through another week, and we are so blessed, Lord, to be in your presence to worship you. Please, oh God, forgive us of the sins that we would have committed that would have separated between us and thee, so that as we worship you today on your holy day, our worship will be pleasing in your sight. Thank you, O oh God, for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. 384, safely through another week. Safely through another week, God has brought us on our way. Now let us know our blessing seek, waiting in his court.
Praise the Lord. Marvelous grace in 109. Because we are a happy lot of people. It's not the good that we have done through the week while we are here, but because the Lord loves us and cares for us. That's why we are here this morning. So, um, this little reading I'm going to do, it is coming from the road map for life. The road map for life. Okay? 
So you believe that we are the roadmap, all of us that are here this morning, you believe that we are the roadmap to others? Yes. Are you like somebody say no? Okay. So here what it says here. Don't rush me. It is saying, a knowledge of God. A knowledge of who? God. A knowledge of God. It says, many are the ways in which God is seeking to make himself known to us and bring us into communion with him. Nature speaks to our sense. Without ceasing, the open hearts will be impressed with the love and glory of God. As we live through, as we live through the work of his hand, the listening hears, the listening what? Yes. It can hear and understand the communication with God through things of nature. So Virgin, this is telling us, this is telling us that if we look at nature, Nature can bring us to Christ. I was sitting and looking on the tree this morning, but all the time I have this like a passage to read. And I was looking on the tree this morning and I was saying, oh man, think it out to worship God and come to God quick. Look at the tree, look at the tree. Just, the tree sings sometime, you know. The tree, the tree sings sometimes. So nature is telling us that God is real. Amen. Okay? So brethren, let us take this thought. It says here again, the communication through nature. The, greens the green fields, the lovely trees, tree of laughter, you know, the buds and flowers are passed, and the passing clouds are falling rain, are even when the rain fall in. Okay? It, it bring peace and deep, and deep thinking to our heart. Okay? Um, cloud and falling rain. The bubbling brook. The, glory, the glories of the heavens speak to our heart and invite us to become acquainted with him who made them all. Amen. What a wonderful God Amen. we serve. And so far this morning, Virgin, let us, by the grace of God, think wisely and love God. And for that reason, Sister Galloway will come and do the the scripture reading for us. Happy Sabbath Church. And the scripture reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, verses one to four, and it says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And verse four, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it the being dead yet speaketh. Here and death a portion of God's holy word. Amen. Amen. So we're sitting down from morning. We're going to stand up now on our feet and we're going to take our hymn and we're going to turn to 539. Five may not speak English, you know me. Five may I speak English, may I go take too long to talk.
this morning that come in this Sabbath morning service, Father. Bless and guide and keep all of us safe and safety. Bless all the little children also, Father. The deacon, the elder, all members, and all visitors. While I ask for this few word in all the precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. And so, it's, it's so happy and nice that we can look into each other face. What a privilege. What a privilege, brethren. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And so this morning, we are going to a lesson for this quarterly. OK, don't the lesson is nice? Yeah. And the lesson I point out we won't sell. Trust me. The listener point out we won't sell. Nobody in Africa can tell me when, when we falter or when we are falter. So, Virgin, let us get closer to the Lord with a loving and will. We can't hide nothing from God. You know, we say, oh, may I go say, may I, may I go take up a book, but I don't want Sister Pierre to see me. Sister Pierre does not see me. But I can't tell God so. Far in most send me that go take up a book when me if it take up from before me take it up. Okay, Bertin. So let us live and draw closer to the Lord. So at this moment, so at this moment now we are going into our lesson and let us stand and I'm asking one of the teacher, please, please to pray for us we go into the lesson. Amen. 
Amen. Happy Sabbath again, church. So I'll be doing your lesson review. So you're going to do it with me this morning, not me talking, but you are helping me to, to honor the things that you learned while you were doing the lesson this week. All right? So we're at lesson number what? Our lesson number two, what is the topic? The central issue of, the central issue? Love or selfishness. What do you think it is though? Selfishness? Both? Well, I concluded through my study that it is love, but we're gonna look at it to see what is the conclusion, all right? Amen? So hope you had done your studies and we're gonna go through it together. So, in John 3, verse 16, the Bible says what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this love was expressed before we were born. Because the Bible says that God created us in his own image and his likeness he created, he them. And when before men sinned, God knew that we would have sinned. Yes, he did. And so he made provision to what? The plan of salvation. So Jesus agreed to come and die for us to the death. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. So when we sin, when Adam and Eve sin, our parents, Sin, they should have died instantly. But God came. He first gave them the, the sacrificial system that foretold his death and resurrection for us. So the death, they should have died instantly. But because of God's love, they did not die instantly. They had the opportunity to repent, having accepted his great salvation, and we are told that they are, they are going to be resurrected. Adam is going to be re resurrected in the new, the earth made new. And so we too, through Jesus' great sacrifice, has the opportunity to live again and not die. And we are living now, so we have all the opportunity now that we are alive because there is no repentance in the grave. So any one of us seeking now to play with our soul salvation, it's time that we stop because we don't have a lot of time left, because as we also know, that probation is about to close. And when probation close, there'll be no, no more chance for us to be saved, or we can even die tonight, die in instant, and that is it for us, because after the death comes the resurrection. So the central theme, love or selfishness, love. So Jesus was having a conversation with his disciples as he journeyed to Jerusalem. And we can find parts of that conversation in Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 44. Let us read it together. That's Luke 19, verses 41 to 44. So he was going to Jerusalem as he always did to worship, but at this time, he, there was something different about this journey. Are we there? Shall we begin? Now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, I'm reading from the, King, the New King James Version. If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For days will come upon you when your enemies <clears throat> will build an embankment around you, surround you and close you in on every side and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in, one, in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. So that is a stern one. That is why Jesus had to weep because he understood how Jerusalem back then would have been destroyed. Because he would have ordained it so. Because of the disobedience of the nation, he brought somebody to bring them into captivity. And who was that person? Titus. 
And that was foretold from in the book of, I think it's Ezekiel. Daniel, right, that, that, this, huh? that this king would come and bring them into captivity because of their disobedience. And we are thinking, are we in a disobedient state at this time? Maybe that this is going to be our lot if we do not change our minds and our lives. But here what this, the prophetess says. Amid national strife and ruin, the steps of the disciples would be beset with perils, and often their heart would be oppressed by fear. They were to see Jerusalem a desolation. The temple swept away. Its worship forever ended, and Israel scattered to all lands. So this was a beautiful, magnificent place was built by, was, who built the, 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 the city? You studied in a brethren. Who built Jerusalem at that time, that beautiful place? Right, so those men, after they got the decree and they went back there, they rebuilt the city. Is it so? Right. And he said it would be like wrecks on a desert shore. And he shall hear of wars and rumors of war. And we hear the same text be repeated in Matthew 24. Where are we going to be hearing about war and rumors of war? And we're at the end of that space now. So it's like history what? Is what? Repeat. Speak to me, man. History is what? Repeating is, are we hearing of wars and rumors of war these days? Yes, man. Yes, man. And so these are going to be similar. He shall hear what? Nations shall rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Are we hearing these things, brethren? So are we in the end of the earth? Are we at the end of the earth? Have you heard of any lately that you can tell me about? Pestilence. COVID what? 19, Virgin, wake up, man. You're sleeping on me. Earthquakes. Where did you hear the last one? Where was that one? Taiwan. And when you look at the buildings, I'm saying, oh my God. I would be afraid to walk near those if I would survive that earthquake. And in what? Diverse places. Because of my spirits, we have never heard of them before. And what? And famines. Are we here of famines? Are we seeing famines? Look at even Jamaica at this time. It's so dry. You know, the, the, the things are not producing as they should anymore. And we find all of this in said, the, book of, the book of St. Matthew. What Christ says. Yet, God, God always gives us a word of assurance. He says, yet. He says what? You shall, I shall not forsake you. Right? He says that what? He directed your attention up to heaven. Where at the end they shall reign with him what? Forever. Right? It, and, and so we continue to look at how, how Christ gives us hope and that love amidst the, this, this, this pronunciation that he made of the desolation and the famine and the, the famine and the earthquake and the pestilences. He still says, you can trust in me because I will what? Take care of you. But that trust comes with a sense of what? A relationship. And that relationship calls for us to be obedient to him. So he who spends his life in an effort to gain worldly riches is indeed making a poor investment. So if you want to look forward to that new Jerusalem that Christ is going to give us as an heritage, he's saying that we cannot spend our earthly lives in the things of this world. We are poor, making poor investments. When, um, which one of the schemes that we had in Jamaica that crashed? Do you remember those schemes as cash plus? And I know a lot of people lost millions of dollars. I have some co-workers that lost millions of dollars. Poor investment. Because what he says, you are to invest in things above, not on the things upon earth. We are mutt and rust, do it not, do it, go it or not. Corrupt it. Too late he will see that in which he has trusted crumbling into dust. So the things that we are now holding out in this world is, gonna, is not going to last. The big houses, they are beautiful that we have. The pretty cars that we love to drive, they're all going to be burnt up. 
we have to invest our lives, our souls into. We have to see ourselves and vision ourselves walking on the streets of gold. You know, when I'm going to foreign, you know, my cousin, I love to go to visit her. And she has a beautiful home. And when I, I, I just love to go there because it's so beautiful where she lives up in the country. And I look forward, I envision myself. She take the picture and I see the room that she pretty up and all that and I say, man, I soon come. You can imagine if we are here envisioning walking on the streets of gold. Sometimes you have a little chain when you did it probably out in the world and somebody have it on your neck and somebody come pluck it from you and take it from you. You feel so hurt. A little piece of something, you know, probably two ounces we are more or less. And you feel upset, them grab me chain, they take up my little gold chain you want. But we're going to be walking on what? Streets of gold. I, I think we need to envision ourselves daily walking on. And when you envision something, you what? You make preparations for it, don't it? Yes, man. You do everything. When you're going to a wedding, mm -hmm, you prepare. Mrs. Bride have to look her best. She get the nicest dress that she think would suit her body type and her hair nicely done. And she fix up and she, and when the husband sees her, my God, his world turns to light, to plus. So when we are going to heaven, we have to envision envision ourselves walking on the streets of gold. And when we do that, we will not allow nothing or nobody to stop us from getting there. So I am encouraging us, see yourself daily, having that personal connection with Christ, having that personal communion with him daily, dying to self, say, Lord, I am weak to so and so sin. Help me to overcome it so you can fill me with your presence. I can live daily with you. The angels bow in Christ's presence daily, just singing what? Holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. And they don't want to be apart from his presence. When you love somebody, Brother Mills, when you see Sister Mills, you fall out of the first, you never want to stop seeing her every minute. That is how we are to be with us and Christ. We are so much in love with him that, you know, you're in love with somebody you can't eat food. Oh, not true. How oh, may I tell lies, sir? I may I love him too? You're a ton idiot. Right. So is it with Christ? You're, you're, you're so in love with him that earthly things don't matter. Are you getting the point? Amen. Amen. Right. So it says that it is only through self-denial through the sacrifice of earthly riches, that the eternal riches can be obtained. And riches not mean some me you have money like Brother Jones. It means that anything that you hold on to is your riches. Right? Yes, it is through much tribulation that the Christian enters the kingdom of heaven. So any one of us think we're gonna sit here and go smoothly in, we have a next guest coming. We're not gonna enter on his bed of rose. Constantly he is to war the good warfare, not laying down his weapons until Christ bids him rest. So anybody know I think they're gonna retire from this life here, Christian life? You are, you are not ready to walk on the streets of gold. Only by giving all to Christ can he secure the inheritance that will endure through eternity. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we look at Sunday, and Sunday says a broken-hearted Savior. I can just imagine my Jesus, my lovely Jesus, being so broken-hearted when he looked at what is going to come upon the nation back then and upon us. And he's saying to me, come to me, my child. I will keep refusing him. How can one refuse love? We'd rather the abuse of the enemy. When a man abuses a woman and says, I love you. I think Satan has tricked us that way to believe that is love. He abuses us with everything. 
and we still got to him. And Jesus is saying, come my child, I want you, I love you, come and accept me. We are refusing him. And, if, and he says, if we refuse him, we are accepting death, we love death. Yes, Elder Jones. Yes, I believe so. But when you, when you have Jesus, you have peace. He says, greater peace are they that love thy law and nothing will offend. When you have Jesus, you have everything. Everything. Anybody want to answer that? And they heard it. I think you need to repeat because I don't think they heard what you asked, Ella Jones. And I ne I've never heard any of Jesus' message when he was speaking. I've never heard it being said that he was loud and shouting. I've never heard it. I, I was told that the, the wind, his sister wife, right, the wind would take his voice across to, and he would sit there in, in, in among hundreds, thousands, and everybody would, could hear him. So the Spirit of the Lord knows how to touch the heart. This is not with loudness or noise that reaches the heart. It's actually a distraction. Noise is actually a distraction to intelligent being who wants to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Be, be, being strong, being strong and, and, and confident is not, is not, is not loudness, is not loudness. Amen. Elder Jones? The Christians, the, yeah, or the, or the army, yes. Christians. Right. Right. And just to add, no Christians. Sister Wise says this word destroyed. No Christians. It meant that. There are those who thought they were Christians that were destroyed. Are you getting the point? Virgin, are you getting the point? Amen. That it means that some of us who are here thinking we're Christians are what? We're not. So we have to see sort out ourselves with the Lord. Yes, Ella appeared. We're there. Right, 
believed. Amen. And Elder Jones made a point of the disciples who were to take the message. And as Christ wept over Jerusalem, was heartbroken, we too as followers, followers says, follow me as I do. We all also to take the message to the world, not only to us to only look up, but we also have a duty to take the message to the world. This Adventist church has gotten a blessing and a revelation of the goodness of Christ. We have the sanctuary message that we, are, we, are, we have been sitting on and so many persons out there do not know that no, Christ is mediating in a heavenly sanctuary and they ought to send on their sins. No, confess them and put them aside so they can be saved. We have this message. We understand revelation, the things that are happening now, and we have to take this message to the world. Where are we? Where are we? What are we doing? And the Lord says we are watchmen on the walls of Zion. And he says, if what if you do not watch, you will pay. So do not. I don't want us to feel that it is okay for us because we know the Adventist message and we understand it. We are okay. That makes it worse for us because we know. And he who knows more gonna feel more of God's wrath because we would have. We should have. So I'm encouraging us this morning. If you don't understand what those messages are, the state of the dead, these things are going to come up more in these last days. We have to understand what they are and the opportunity when we get them to come and learn them. We have to use them because we're going to be charged even though we did not come because we had the opportunity to know and to tell. It's better for us if we don't come here and understand the message than to come here and understand it and sit down on it and don't tell the world out there. The Sunday church is out there. That probation is about to close. The probation is about to close, brethren. And we are sitting on this message, waiting upon the church to have opportunities for us to go when we have the neighbors and friends around us who are dying in their sins. Sometimes I wonder, because when I look at my father, I used to tell him, but he used to joke it out, but I wonder if I was forceful enough in telling him. But we all have a message to bring to others, all right? Christ is, um, I'm not gonna go through all of it, because time is, is, is on, on us. And so as I, we said earlier, that Christians were preserved. None of them perished when Jerusalem was destroyed. Because what? They were close to Christ. And they looked at the signs and they understand. But if you're not close to Christ, he cannot tell you in word. He said, I'm gonna hide it from you. If you're not close to him, if you have your best friend or your husband, and you're not, he's not gonna tell you, she's not gonna tell you everything in his heart. But when you have a close relationship with somebody, they will tell you everything, all of them secrets. So it with us that we have to stay close to Christ so we know when to move when he says, because brethren, let me tell you and enforce this and reinforce this in your minds that what is to break upon us is not thank you, thank you, play, play something. Unless you decide you're gonna take the mark of the beast. And I look a thank you, thank you thing. You have to have Christ in your four pockets to be saved in these last days. Even so, for him to, be, to seal you. The ruin of Jerusalem was a symbol of the final ruin that shall overwhelm the world. The prophecies that receive a partial fulfillment in the overthrow of Jerusalem have a more direct application to the last days. We are now standing on the threshold of great and solemn events. A crisis is before us, such as the world has never witnessed. And I think to myself, I have heard of mothers being, their babies being torn from them alive. 
I have heard of people being slit in two and sit asunder. What can be worse than that? I cannot imagine it. The majesty of heaven has the destiny of nations as well as the concerns of his church in his charge. The divine instructor is saying to every agent in the accomplishment of his plans, as he said to Cyprus, I girded thee, though thou was not, no, has not known me. So the Lord will carry us. He will gird us. He will keep us. But will he keep you, keep you if you're disobedient? Will he keep I if I'm disobedient? He will not. Yes, Elder Jones. 